Ah yes, Stakeland. I was flicking through my eternal watch list on Prime the other night and stumbled across this film. I'm quite a big fan of vampire movies and the genre really is undead with a near constant stream of variations of vampire stories on our screens to a greater or lesser extent over the years. I quite like the idea of a vampire apocalypse movie and I'm pleased to say Stakeland is well worth a watch. Snakeclan is a 2010 post-apocalyptic horror film directed by Jim Mickle with a lean runtime of 98 minutes. When a pandemic of vampirism strikes, humans find themselves on the run from vicious, feral beasts. Large cities are left as tombs and survivors cling together in rural pockets, fearing nightfall. When his family is slaughtered, young Martin, played by Connor Paolo, is taken under the wing of a grizzled, wayward vampire hunter called Mister, played by Nick Demisi. Mr. takes Martin on a journey through the lockdown towns of America's heartland, searching for a better place in the famed New Eden up north, while taking down any bloodsuckers that cross their path. Along the way, they are joined by others, the first being a nun known only as Sister, played by Kelly McGillis, who they rescue from two young rapists who Mr. kills without hesitation. They continue to move north, avoiding major thoroughfares that have been seized by the Brotherhood, a fundamentalist militia headed by such fanatics as Jebediah Loven, played by Michael Severus, who interprets the plague as God's will at work. Martin and Mr. embark on a perilous journey through a desolate America, battling both feral vampires and hostile human survivors. As they travel north towards New Eden, they encounter various allies and enemies, all while struggling to survive in a world where humanity teeters on the brink of extinction. Directed by Jim Mickle and written by Mickle and Nick Demisi, State Land was produced on a modest budget of approximately $650,000. Upon its release in 2010, State Land grossed over $33,000 in its limited theatrical run. Its success was bolstered by positive word of mouth and subsequent releases on home video platforms. A sequel was made, so I presume it was financially successful on streaming and DVD sales. Stakeland was originally envisioned by Mikkel and Demisi as a web series about a vampire hunter that they could produce cheaply on the weekends. They developed 48-minute scripts and brought them to producer Larry Fessenden, who suggested a feature film instead. Mikkel agreed and reworked the script to emphasise feelings of isolation over bloodshed. Mikkel and Demisi specifically wanted to include happy moments and cooperation in the script, as they felt that many post-apocalyptic films were unremittingly bleak. Religious extremists were added to show their toxic effect on society, and they also wanted to emphasise more than just monsters and a vampire plague. The filming took place in various locations across the United States, including Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, and the Catskills Mountains. There was a three-month hiatus in the shooting schedule, so the seasons could change for the exterior shots. Shooting took 26 days in total. The production team aimed to create a visually bleak and desolate atmosphere, emphasising practical effects and makeup to depict the vampire-infested landscape. Stakeland received generally positive reviews from critics. It was praised for its atmospheric tension, strong performances, and effective blend of horror and drama. Critics highlighted the film's gritty realism and its ability to transcend genre conventions. However, some noted pacing issues and the grim tone as potential drawbacks. Overall, Stakeland garnered a cult following and remains a notable entry in the vampire and post-apocalyptic genres. Trivia, the producers created seven webisodes as prequels set during the start of the apocalypse to coincide with the release of the film and explains various characters in more detail. The long take in the survivor settlement, with the vampires being dropped by the Brotherhood, was not originally planned that way, but evolved as time limitations forced the scene into a single day shooting. Throughout filming, actor Nick Demisi wore his mother's actual wedding ring on the pinky of his right hand as a way of acknowledging his character's backstory. A sequel titled Stakeland 2, The Stakelander, was released in 2016, continuing the story of Mr. and Martin. Jim Mickle aimed to create a grounded and realistic portrayal of a world overrun by vampires, focusing on character-driven storytelling amidst the horror elements. He also directed In the Shadow of the Moon. Key quote, Mr. the Vampire Hunter says at one point, In desperate times, false gods abound. People put their faith in the loudest preacher and hope they're right, but sometimes they're wrong, dead wrong. As someone who's watched many a vampire film, Stakeland Clan manages to offer some fresh thrills in a well-worn genre by fusing vampirism as a plague in an apocalyptic road movie. The film has constant momentum as the duo head towards New Eden, encountering friends and foes along the way. There were some really shocking deaths and reminded me a bit of the early seasons of Game of Thrones where anything can happen. Life in the world of State Clan is fleeting and brutal. I found sometimes the lack of dialogue a bit frustrating, but on retrospect it added to the solemn introspection of this awful world they live in, and you do want them to succeed. The paternal relationship between Mr. and Martin become a strong bond of us against the world type feel, clinging onto what humanity they can find left, with brief moments of levity and welcome companionship while surviving this bleak and rough world. There are some excellent performances from the cast, and there's a welcome surprise to see Kelly McGillis again in the film role as the sister. 
Stakeland, for better or worse, does have a melancholic tone. There are no pretty boy twilight vampires here, they are more like the zombies in 28 Days Later, lethal and feral animals. It's similar to I Am Legend, but I'd say this achieves much more with its minute budget, and the vampires are real actors with makeup, not rubbery CGI. Stakeland is a strong character piece with an eerie atmosphere that is taut with suspense for the majority of its lean runtime. It unfolds with a measured pace that explodes into sudden bursts of brutal violence. It pushes its modest budget to the limit and manages to pull off some cool looking shots and spectacular violence, particularly the one takes Siege on the village. The religious extremism is an interesting viewpoint and creates a tense atmosphere in which you don't feel the characters are ever safe and it's difficult to know who to trust. I remember towards the end thinking, God, I really hope these two get a break. Overall, State Clan is rightly celebrated for its unique take on vampire mythology, its intimate storytelling, and the ability to evoke a sense of dread and survival in a devastated world. State Clan is a worthy addition to the vampire film genre and well worth your time. Thanks for watching. If you liked or learned anything in this video, please like and subscribe so I can keep growing my channel. If you've seen the film, please comment below your thoughts.